Well, it's another wonderful day. Take a look. Sunny, warm. <laughs> of course, I realize that sunny and warm isn't necessarily wonderful, especially in New York, where there's always a drought. Either there was a drought or there's going to be a drought. There was almost a drought. It's coming a drought. <laughs> even, even when it rains in New York, somebody tell you it's no good. It didn't rain in the right place. <laughs> It could rain for six days, non-stop. People are getting washed down the sewers. Cars are flooded, cats are floating. But it was not in the right place. You know, it has to rain in the Catskill Mountains for me to take a bath in Queens. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm glad it's not raining now because I have to walk to the subway. You know, I'm going downtown for an appointment about a whole new job. Tomorrow, at this time, I may no longer be at leisure. You see, the difference between a Jew and a Gentile being out of work is that when a Gentile is out of work, he says, I'm out of a job. A Jew never says, I'm out of a job. I'm waiting to hear. <laughs> Either I'm waiting to hear or I'm deciding between offers. <laughs> or they say, for the first time, I'm enjoying the kids. <laughs> Either that or there's a deal pending, an offer pending, this is pending, something is pending. <laughs> He not be making a dime, but he's heat bending. <laughs> Listen, but I happen to be a realistic man. I can't be out of work forever. And this is a chance to do something important. That's right. For the rest of my life. So I hope that this interview works out or else I'll be back pending for a living. <laughs> When the taxi comes, you'll put my suitcase in. Wait a second. Why do you need a whole suitcase for one day in Atlantic City? Who can tell in New York what outfit's going to be lucky in Atlantic City? <laughs> oh, you should come with me once. It's a lot of fun. I know it's a lot of fun, but who wants to take a bus through New Jersey just to get to it? <laughs> tell me about this interview you're going on. Oh, this is a fantastic interview. I'm going to see Sidney Hirsch. Who is he? Well, are you kidding? He's the chairman of the board of the Helping Hearts Foundation. This could be the break I was looking for. Mr. Hirsch has a daughter? <laughs> That's the break you're looking for. And you? This will be an opportunity to do something worthwhile, to make a difference in people's lives. I'll do social work. Oh, you were never a social worker. Listen, you were never a mother before you had me. Now look how well that turned out. Now tell me, how did this uh, Mr. Hirsch make all his money? Oh, he's the owner of Lady Fancy Lingerie. That sleazy underwear company? It's not sleazy. It's kinky. So what if it's kinky? Some people like kinky. Do you like kinky? I don't like kinky, but I don't have to wear it. <laughs> Listen, a lot of people must like kinky, otherwise this man would not be a multimillionaire. You cannot be a multimillionaire without money. <laughs> he gives every penny he's got to the Helping Hearts Foundation. You have to respect the man for that. So you're not going to have anything to do with the kinky? No. Listen, but I'm sure if he hires me to work for the foundation, he'll give me a discount on the lingerie. What do you need? <laughs> oh, Mr. Fisher, thank you for coming. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, boy, this is a... Lovely office. Uh, well, normally we'd meet at the foundation office. I hope you don't mind coming up here. No, I don't mind at all. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> oh, boy. Take a look what's going on here. <laughs> Most offices, they have music. 
This is a much better idea. <laughs> well, I assume you know that the foundation doesn't pay very much. As a matter of fact, our top people make as little as 18000 a year. Oh, that's okay, sir. I, uh, I didn't expect to make a fortune. Oh, I see you never went to college. No. Oh, that's too bad. All of our social workers have college degrees. Makes sense to me. Listen, anybody could live on a million dollars a year, but to figure out how to get by on 18000 <laughs> For this, you need a PhD. Oh, I see you were in the uh, in the pajama business, too. Oh, you worked for Sleepsoft, huh? Sleepsoft, yes. I was their top salesman in the upstate market. Before I got to Poughkeepsie, everybody there was sleeping naked. So you're the one I read about in Fashion Quarterly, huh? Oh, I was very impressed. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Fisher, how'd you like to come to work for me? Hey, thank you. It's been my pleasure. <laughs> I'll start tomorrow. I'll be the best man Helping Hearts Foundation ever had. No, 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 no. Not the Helping Hearts. You don't have the qualifications, but I can sure use an experienced salesman like you here at Lady Fancy. Uh, no, sir. I, uh, I've made up my mind to change careers. I'm not interested in being a salesman. 40000 a year against commissions. No, sir. I, you don't understand. I don't intend All to. All right, 50. 50. <laughs> Listen, how much did you say Helping Hearts Foundation pays? 18000 That That's right, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'll here. take seventeen. Oh, smart. <laughs> All right. You don't want 50, huh? Well, I'll go to 55 plus profit sharing. That's as high as I go. I'll tell you what. I'll take 16,000. That's it. <laughs> that's it. 16,000. That's as low as I go. All right. All right. I see what you're doing here. 60,000 plus profit sharing plus dental. Take it or leave it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll go a little lower than that. Just a, just a little lower. A little You're a shrewd bit. negotiator, Fisher. I like your style, but unfortunately, I've reached my limit. 60 grand plus fringe benefits. I'll tell you what, I haven't reached mine. 15,000, that's it. $60,000, Fisher. Think about it. Boy, it's a lot of money. You'll take it. You didn't ask me to take it, you asked me to think about it. I'll think about it. So Hirsch told me I didn't have the proper credentials to work for peanuts. So you're disappointed? Sure. Oh, don't be. You know what this social worker had to do on the job today? I had to fix the hot water heater, then I had to go and help carry cots over to the family care center, and then I had to bring home all this paperwork so I could do the bookkeeping. You had to do all these things. Yeah, it's not such a wonderful job as you might think. So what do you think happened? After turning me down for the Helping Hearts Foundation, he offers me $60,000 a year to work for Lady Fancy Lingerie. What did you say? I said, I'll think it over. <laughs> and I was thinking all the way home on the subway, I kept thinking, should I take the $60,000 or should I not take the $60,000? Should I become a social worker or should I not be a social worker? Should I listen to Mr. Hirsch or should I not listen to Mr. Hirsch? Did you come to a decision? No, I came to Coney Island. <laughs> I missed my stop. Oh, God, I don't blame you. $60,000. That's a lot of money. I had this vision of helping people. I don't know if this whole thing could turn out like my Club Med experience. You went to Club Med? Sure. Oh, you didn't know that? I did. I've always wanted to go there. Well, when I went there, I got so excited. I, I had this vision of women on beaches with little tiny bikinis and sexy little buddies. I thought they would all be looking for me. I couldn't wait to get there. Yeah, and you didn't have a wonderful time? Well, they were all there with the bikinis, but they all had one thing in common. They didn't want me. <laughs> Six days and seven nights I spent there, I couldn't make one connection. <laughs> That's because I wasn't there. <laughs> The only thing that kept it from being a total disaster was some block 43. <laughs> so what's the point? This whole social work situation could turn out to be just like another club met. On paper, it looked fantastic. But uh, who knows if I'm going to like it? Who knows? But $60,000. Mm. You don't have to like it. You don't have to look at it. You don't have to touch it. All you have to do is take it. I want to do it. I get to do it. Quiet. I'm on the phone. Mm. Hello? Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Fisher. Can I help you? Yes, of course. I'll be right back. Um, my idea is so I get to be the sushi master. Tell her, Mom. I want to cut up the sushi. Because I know how to handle a knife. Women. We do so. <laughs> Mom, would you tell the woman I'm in charge? I told you, Patty is going to do the cutting. She's on the phone with some guy. Hey, stripping on my shoes. <laughs> Come on, let's go take his head off. I don't want you to cut off its anything until Patty gets off the phone. Okay, Mom. Here it is. I put a path. 
John puts a path, and we own a Mitsubishi 600. Oh, that's fine. Well, will one be enough? What is a Mitsubishi 600? <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Mitsubishi. Tell her, Jackie. Mitsubishi. <laughs> it's Japanese for Mississippi. <laughs> great motor scooter and I only need nine hundred dollars oh you poor child you have nothing you don't have nine hundred dollars you don't have a mother who will give you nine hundred dollars you can't have a motor scooter because it's too dangerous they only go 40 miles an hour and I swear I'll wear a helmet if you honestly thought that I would approve of this it's too late for the helmet <laughs> thanks a lot Shut up, Mom. <laughs> when do you have to give Hirsch an answer? Well, as soon as I can think of one. I'd better get to that kitchen. Okay, meanwhile, I'll take a long walk and see if I can bump into the decision. Yeah, look, why don't you come over to Michael's bar later? I've got to go there and help out. Sure, why not? Unless you want to stay here and have sushi with us. Thank you, I don't think so. I can't eat anything I just had eye contact with. <laughs> Scotch and water, tequila shooter, 7 and 7, and a draft. Hey, what is it about me that you don't like? I don't have time to go into it. The bar closes at 2. <laughs> What's that smell? I'll get you some more peanuts. That'll be a Scotch and water, tequila shooter, 7 and 7, and a draft, please, Michael. Coming up. How'd you feel? You know those beach balls they throw on in the field at Shea Stadium? Yeah. I feel like Shea Stadium. <laughs> you look about ready to me. If I don't have this kid soon, he's gonna be able to walk out. Hey, Rick, let's have some more peanuts, some pretzels, and a key to your apartment. <laughs> and Ernie's a riot. He's looking to get married. Huh, where? The little chapel under the rock. <laughs> yeah, he's harmless. Not to mention being worth a few million bucks. Oh, what does he do? Ernie Ferran? Ferran's credit funeral since 1915? <laughs> of course, I thought I recognized the smell. Embalming fluid. <laughs> you want me to go out with him? At least the man's got a job, unlike a certain little fella we know. Don't call Jackie Little. All I'm saying is you could lose the man in tall grass. <laughs> Oh, Michael, haven't you insulted the man enough? I don't think so. He's still coming around. <laughs> Jackie, hi! Oh, hello, hello. Hey, Jackie, why do you hear from Moshe Diane? <laughs> Isn't he dead? Who's dead? Moshe Diane. He's been dead 10 years. Did I do him? <laughs> hi, Jackie. Oh, looks like a little boy, huh? Feels like a whale. <laughs> How was your walk? Oh, well, I didn't walk too far. I got tired. I went to the movies. What'd you see? I'm not sure. The theater had 18 screens showing 16 sequels. <laughs> Ghostbusters 2 was in theater 8, Star Trek 5 was in theater 6, Rainbow 4 was in 9, and Karate Kid 3 was in 3. At least that one makes sense. You didn't see the picture. Did you make a decision? Michael? Well, I'll tell you. Oh, Michael. What is it? We're going to find out any minute. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Go to the next step, Michael. Okay, all right, all right. Let's go. Okay. okay. All right, I'm coming, too. No, no, you can't. You got to stay here and take care of the place. Right, right. right. Oh, 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 Jackie can oh look God. after the bar. I could look after the bar. I'm going alone. Oh Please, Jackie. Wait, okay, okay, I'll look after the bar. No, you can't leave him in charge of the place. This is an Irish bar in an Irish neighborhood with Irish customers. Uh. Tell a Jewish bartender, come on. <laughs> This might come as a shock to you, but I don't do this for a living. What do you do? I've been asking myself the same question all day. But this is definitely not it. Oh, come on. Oh, this? Excuse me, please! <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to help everybody here as much as possible. I'll give you any drink you want. I just want one condition observed. You got that? It has to come right out of the bottle or forget about it. <laughs> I don't want anything about blending, dress hopping, and wallpaper banging. <laughs> For 35 years, Jackie, I had this dream. 
McGinty and Sons, plumbing contractors for Greater New York. And now my boy's finally out of school. He tells me plumbing's not for him. Can you figure that? Hal, Hal, let me ask you a question. What did your father do for a living? He drove a bus up and down Lexington Avenue. If you wanted to drive a bus too, you know what your father would have done for you? He would have done anything in the world to make it possible for you also to drive a bus. But you didn't want to drive a bus. You know why, Al? Because you had a dream. I did? Of course you did. You wanted to see more of this world than just Lexington Avenue. You were inspired by the same spirit that makes this country great. I was. Yes. That's why you said to yourself, I have to do something more than this. I don't want to be just a bus driver all my life. I want to come to something fantastic. You wanted to be a plumber. A plumber. I mean, once you had it in your heart, there was no turning back. You knew that you wanted to spend the rest of your life under a sink. But your legs sticking out. <laughs> you know, to other people, they see sinks and dirt and slime and grime, and they say, yuck, it's not for me. But not you. <laughs> not you. They saw nothing in it, but you saw beauty. And poetry. And poetry. <laughs> poetry, that's right. And you should want the same thing for your son. You should want him to be able to find his own poetry. Wherever he could find it, no matter what he wants from it. But who knows, someday he'll come to his own senses. Someday. And he'll be walking down an empty street, someplace in the dark, and all of a sudden he'll say to himself, Hey, maybe there's some place I could fix a toilet. <laughs> so I should let him do what he wants, right? That's it. And you'll accomplish something that's even more important than being a great plumber. You know what you'll be? You'll be a great father. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. So, Bernice, you look like a reasonably intelligent person. Do you have any idea how to help Tyrone here over this fear of revolving doors? <laughs> well, obviously, it's prenatal anxiety. Stemming from the time when, as he just told us, his mother worked at Macy's. <laughs> you know, that's a brilliant conclusion. Makes a lot of sense, Bernice. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people say that uh, everybody wants to go back to the womb. It's supposed to be such a fantastic place. I don't know what's so fantastic about being in a lonely, dark, damp, terrible little place. <laughs> where you can't open the window, you can't watch television. <laughs> There's nobody to talk to you, and even if they talk to you, you can't hear them. Nobody answers you. <laughs> For nine months, you're hanging around. She goes every place you don't go no. <laughs> Why this is considered fun, I don't know. Hey, this is a terrific guy. Let's drink a toast to Jack and you. Give me another bourbon. No chance, my friend. No chance. You tell me you don't know how to make a bourbon. No, no, but I don't see why you should be drinking so much. I could see it if you worked in the Pentagon. Why are you drinking so much? <laughs> In the Pentagon, they should be drinking. They keep building things nobody ever heard of, nobody has any use for. Do you know that they just, do you know they just created a stealth bomber? Do you believe this? This is a bomber that you can't see. It's $800 million. You can't see it. I think if you can't see it, why don't you tell the Russians that we built it and forget about it? How are they going to know that it's not there? We'll tell them there's planes over Russia right now. They'll say, where? I don't know. And you can tell them there's more coming from where? That's it. <laughs> you know, when they built that plane, they told the pilot to test it. So he sat down in the chair and they said, you're in the plane. He said, where? <laughs> they said, you like it? He said, I think it's great. How do you know? I'm not sure. <laughs> False alarm. Oh. She's fine. The doctor said it'll probably be another week or so. She's home. Jackie, thanks for taking over. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Hey, this is all the business we did. We're down a hundred bucks from yesterday. And where is everybody? Well, I sent them all home. Why? If they were drinking. <laughs> Oh, what a night. You were very quiet on the way home. Well, uh, I was thinking. I was, you know, when I think, I'm quiet. Did you come to any conclusions? Well, Maddie, I, I did a great job at the bar tonight. You should have heard me talk to these people about their problems. I uh, tell you the truth, I amazed even myself. I, I can't remember ever feeling so good. You know, helping people even a little bit. It's a kind of an exciting feeling just to see the appreciation in their faces. I know the feeling. This is not a feeling. 
This is a decision. I finally made a decision. Goodbye, Mr. Hirsch, and goodbye $60,000 a year. That's it. Why? <laughs> Listen, Jackie, why don't I talk to my boss tomorrow morning? Because there are so many things that you could help us with at the settlement house and you'd get on the job training at the same time. Do you mean this? Well, yes, if you're willing to work for $15,000 a year. You can't go lower. <laughs> I don't think so. Wow. How come you ever told me this before? Well, it was only a few minutes ago that you really decided what it was you wanted to do. This is fantastic. Jackie Fisher, social worker. <laughs> Boy, I can't wait to print cards. <laughs> this is the greatest break in my life. I'll, I'll never get over this opportunity. That you'll never regret it. I, I'll be there on time every... I'll be the first one in the morning, the last one out at night. I'll... Right, fine. You'll start Monday morning. Forget about it. Not Monday morning. Monday morning is Yom Kippur. <laughs> Happy New Year. It's a great way to start. Hello, hello. <laughs> I hope you had as good a day today as I did. <laughs> I had a great day. You know, what could be better than getting a job doing something that you really want to do? It was a good day for my mother, too. You know, she came home safely from Atlantic City with a hundred dollars. She went there with a hundred and fifty. <laughs> But the main thing is, she had a good time. And the best thing that happened was that she made the acquaintance of a nice gentleman who sells subway tokens in Queensborough Plaza Station. <laughs> he promised to look the other way when she jumps over the tungsten. <laughs> you know, it's interesting how many lives that you could become involved with when you really care about someone. Between my mother and Maddie, I find myself also concerned with a token seller. Three beautiful kids, a bartender, his wife, I'm some little person who hasn't even shown up yet. <laughs> do I need this? I think I do. <laughs> I'm Ted Koppel. Later on Nightline, she spent two years in jail rather than let her ex-husband spend two weeks alone with their daughter. Dr. Elizabeth Morgan and her former husband join us live tonight. Sunday at 7, 6 Central, Corky's babysitting job turns into an adventure on Life Goes On. Then, is there romance in the Harper household? Let the spirit move you on Free Spirit. After the class gets to star in a video on a rockin' home room. Now, stay tuned for the Barbara Walters special. Next. <laughs>